but this video will be about the heat exchanger. And I'm using the Frozen Boost 101, uh, and I'm going to be mounting it right under here. I made these brackets, just some steel brackets I found at Home Depot, and welded them together. Not probably the best thing to use, but it works. Um, and I'm going to put some nut certs into these and then bolt the brackets to them and then put nut certs in the crash bar. I'm going to try using these 90 degree fittings and run the hoses up right through there with these hoses with the power steering and the AC. Um, so I'm going to get these nut certs started and try to mount this thing. All right, I kind of skipped through mounting these and how I made the brackets. Um, I started out with a bracket that looked like this and they were extremely uh, wobbly and didn't work. So I made some new ones. Uh, let's see if I can get a better picture. I just took two pieces of uh, like a 90 degree angle bracket and welded them together. And then on the top, I welded little gussets on the sides. And then and the piece, the angled piece that I cut off the bottom part, uh, I welded right here. And then I put a nutter in the back of the crash bar and underneath on both sides. And now that thing's sturdy. Um, here I've got the top one here at a 90 and it runs you can kind of see the uh, heat exchanger pump right there and that one runs there and then I got the other one it's behind the, uh, the hood latch thing but runs right through that hole next to the intake boot And I didn't realize that the lid is 5 8 hose and basically from here back on the T uh, is all three quarters. So I ran 5 8 hose from the lid to the T and then three quarter down. And then right here, I've got to get a 5 8 to three quarter adapter and some more hose clamps. Uh, can't really see, but... There's the 5 8 hose back there. It's pretty tight. Um, I just got bulk hose from Amazon. Or you can go to O'Reilly's, AutoZone, or whatnot. Uh, so the next part, after getting some clamps, is to wire this in. And it's nice that the fuse box is right here. So battery power is pretty easy since there is a post in here already that has battery power so I can run uh, battery power off that down or where, I don't know where I'm gonna mount the relay yet hopefully somewhere to clean it up uh, yeah also uh, I mean I can fit probably like one and a half fingers in here uh, maybe about an inch all the way across, but the horns, I actually had to bend this bracket pretty good in order for them to clear the heat exchanger and clear the plug. And I found these nifty little uh, ground terminals at work. So I'm actually gonna take the ground for the heat exchanger pump and I'll probably just ground it here or literally I could do it underneath here, anywhere right here, but these will make a nice ground. I'll use these for the relay and for the pump. Well, my hose clamps finally came in off of Amazon. And I also used some, uh, they call them hose separators. There's the adapter right here. That's the five eighths to three quarters. And then I have these here just to kind of keep the hoses in place. Go under the intake. Through here, I got my pump all wired up. 
I didn't really want to use one of those add a fuse things at first, but I did. Here's the ground. And then this ground is actually the ground for the pump and the relay. I have this mounted on here like this. But right now I'm trying to fix uh, hood clearance issues with a strut brace. So uh, I don't know where that's going to go yet. And then I just tapped into, I used the add a fuse on the rear O2s. And then I also had a fuse holder for the relay. And that's my constant power right off of there. So the heat exchanger will, or the pump will run whenever the ignition is in key on. So that is all hooked up. I am just waiting on the brick here. And then uh, once the brick's in the lid, I can fill it with coolant. And then I will run the key on probably for about five minutes. Just make sure there's no air in there whatsoever. And then that is it for the heat exchanger. There's another view of it here. 90 degree fittings on the side. This is the Frozen Boost 101. That's their part number for it. Uh, the drain, I had to order a special plug for that because the one they uh, include is like an inch long and it's gonna stick down and hit the splitter. But other than that, uh, just waiting on that brick and we are good to go. Last but not least, with that Frozen Boost 101, when you uh, install your bumper back on this part uh, here needs to get trimmed uh, I don't know how much but I know that it needs to be trimmed so uh, once I get the bumper back on I'll make an update uh, video with some more dimensions or exactly how much I took off but uh, Jake was the one who told me about this and it will hit so I gotta cut some off. Earlier in one of my oh, first or second videos I was going over belt length. Uh, it's best to just use a string and measure. Uh, I kind of went off a belt that somebody else used and it was so hard to put on that I thought it wasn't long enough. It was a 101 inch belt. Uh, so I got 102 inch, and when I put that on, after running it probably only 20 minutes, it stretched the belt enough to where I could see it flopping around down here, where it goes from the tensioner down to the crank. So I did put the other one back on, and it works a lot better, and I can already tell that it's stretched a little bit. Uh, you can see I have a little gap there. Uh, when I first put it on, it was totally maxed. And uh, I expect it to stretch a little bit more once it breaks in. I've probably only put 10 miles on it since it's been back from the tuner. So yeah, just measure for your belt. Um, catch can. Mighty Mouse makes a great product. And then I ran fresh air to here. These are called through fittings. Uh, they're for jet ski bilge pumps, but... There's actually like a weird thing inside and then this threads on the outside and then there's a nipple right there. So I just stuck that on there and that's working great. No issues so far. All right guys, uh, the build is pretty much done. Uh, this is gonna be the last video, basically going over any bit of uh, troubles I had. Um, the main one was using this pulley the Olsen Custom Pulley. Uh, it's an eight rib pulley, but uh, you use a six rib belt. And I actually had the belt over one rib this way, and it caused the power steering pulley, uh, the belt to ride up the pulley and actually like knock the pulley forward. And it sounded uh, very bad, like a really bad lifter tick. Um, so make sure the belt is all the way back on this pulley um bleeding the heat exchanger i highly highly recommend using uh a vacuum bleeder like a one you hook up to an air hose i tried to use a little hand vacuum pump and it didn't work uh, my tuner ended up calling me and was like hey the 
pump's not working. Uh, I used my vacuum bleeder at work and it took another third of a gallon of coolant. A lot of people ask, does this fit under a stock hood? Yes, just cut the inside out. No holes, fits perfectly. Uh, I did have to make these spacers to fit the V2 strut brace. It is very close. I have creative steel mounts. They do not hit, or I should say the lid does not hit the brace even under heavy acceleration. Uh, and those are 10 millimeters thick of solid aluminum. And then the bolts, I just matched up something I had at work and that worked fine. Uh, other than that, everything is Great, uh, made 575 wheel horsepower and 535 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, I'm very happy with that for a stock bottom end motor. Um, but yeah, uh, if you have any more questions or need videos of specific things, go ahead and uh, ask away.